Safan Hassan. That fifteen hundred. Sorry, I was looking at these comments. We got a lot of good comments here. DC Knoll says, I think Ingerbritsen made Sheptica rethink his entire strategy for the Olympics. He needs to go harder. Do you yeah. think that's true? Do you think well, that's true? Well, you just said you just said in order to beat Ingebrigtsen, you need to not be with them with hundred meters to go. Okay. Yeah. We saw a twelve forty eight race. So clearly you would be with them if it's a thirteen ten race, a thirteen flat yes. race, or a twelve fifty yes. race. So in order to make yeah. them not near you, you need to make it like a twelve forty race. In order for them to not be near you, like you're gonna need to be like, hey, go out there, it's just click off 60 seconds as long mm -hmm. as you possibly can, and then hope you. He needs to. He needs to run like Kip too. He needs to. Kip too was really yeah. ahead of everyone. He was thinking before everyone else. He's like, this is the future of how to win races. You got to go out in 60 seconds. I think. I think he was on to something. <laughs> All right, that women's 15, which was the other highlight of this meet, Safan Hassan. And Faith Kipyegon had a classic. This was a amazing, amazing race between the two. Hassan prevails 353.63 to Kipyegon's 353.91. Muir was in the mix, as she always is, and finishes in third, 355.59. So in the same week, Safan Hassan breaks the 10K world record, has her 10K world record broken, and then runs a 350, 353 in the 1500 she's run faster she ran that 351 in doha and that was in close proximity to a 10k so this is this is something she is very familiar with not entirely surprising that she was able to do it but it is still impressive to watch her just jump around to different events and beat the best people in the world gordon i have a feeling that there's a there's a group text there's like a facebook group or a group message with the best 1,500-meter mm. women, 5K women, and 10K women. And mm. the only person not invited to it is Safan Hassan because they're all talking about like, all right, how do we get her not to run our event? Because they know she can't do all three. They know mm. she's going to do two of the three. So they're all going to be fighting over like, how do we tell Safan, hey, 5K is not for you. Hey, don't do the 10K. Hey, stay out of the 15. Because basically, I think Hassan is – Super, if 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 we can gamble, I'm parlaying her pulling off the double 100% because I don't see anyone upsetting Hassan in whatever two events she chooses to run. 15 and 5 seem to be out based on the schedule. So we could do the Safan Hassan double, the Hassan Hathanathan, Safanathan. There we go. The 1510, or, you know, the big one like she did before. And she's only she's the only one who's done it in history, so it is named after her. Or she could go five ten. I thought entering the year five ten. I thought fifteen ten. Yeah, that was a one time thing, and then she'll go back to the more traditional five ten. But then you watch what Gade does in the ten, breaks her world record. Okay, maybe you think that one's going to be tough, but then she she can run faster in the ten as well too. It's not like she didn't do an amazing performance just a couple of days before that. I still think it's going to end up being five and 10, but I would not just because she's going to need to be at her best in both. And with the rounds with the 1500, I think you'd want to avoid that. Kibiegon's not going anywhere. So I think it would still be the five and the 10. What do you think? This is an interesting scenario we have here, right? So she runs this 353 after she runs the crazy 10,000. Now she's run a, a 5,000 this year. But by the standard of the 15 and the 10, it was a modest 1435. What's If she had a week to get ready for a 5K, what sort of shape do you think she'd be in right now for a 5K? Sub 1410. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not ready to say sub 14, but I think she could run 14.0. Okay. What do you think? 14.0. So, so you think at minimum – Number two time all time. No, I think that yeah. that matches. Yeah. I'm just thinking if you had, you know, because it's tough to find somebody with her range is impossible to find in, for women. So if I told you, oh yeah, a man has run uh, 2906 and 353 recently, what are they going to run in a 5K? It, it would be interesting to see what what you'd come up with. But clearly, her season best is going to get demolished, and I think her lifetime best of 
fourteen twenty two is just going to get destroyed the next time she runs it. That seems inevitable. Yeah, I think it's cool that we're going to have the women's world records be twenty eight fifty nine and thirteen fifty nine in our lifetime. We just know mm-hmm. not even our lifetime in our in our thirties, right? In a few years, if not less, before. You know. But I think it's kind of cool. I used to think, you know, you think some of these barriers were like impossible. Like the way you'd say no one's ever going to break nine seconds in a hundred, right? You're like, it's mm-hmm. just not going to ever be possible. You know, sometimes I would think sub 14 was one of those type of marks or sub 29, but clearly it's not because we're seeing multiple women be in that, in that category and potentially can break it in their career, which is crazy. I got bad news for you, Gordon. You might be out of your thirties by the time you see a sub nine second. Hundred. Well, yeah, I know that. I know that. <laughs> well, you're a young guy. But I you're am not young. that. I'm not that young. <laughs> uh, David says 353 is pretty slow for a guy breaking 14. Yeah, obviously there's there's some differences here, but we won't we don't know until she actually decides to run it. And I need her to run it now because I need to know with her current shape, like right now. I mean, rest a little bit, but when she's in the same training cycle and 